Hey, Holly Boyd here, your Christian organizer, and today I want to give you a Holly's Habitude to pass on to all of your non-believing friends because this is amazing. I've been gone, as you know, for a couple of years taking care of Alzheimer's Grammy, my husband's mother, and when she came here, she had the mind of about a three-year-old. She passed away at about, I'd say about the mind of a two-month-old, um, but she was saved even in her dementia. Um, she had never prayed, never gone to church before, did not raise my husband in the Christian way. And after she was saved, um, she would bow her head and say, Grace with us, and know even how to pray, which she had never known before. So after she was saved, even with dementia, it changed her. But let me tell you the biggest one of all. My husband's father was the most stubborn man I have ever met in my life. And I've met quite a few. But he didn't even want, he might as well go, la, 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 la. Every time he talked about Jesus, he didn't want to hear about God. He didn't want to hear about salvation or heaven or dying at all. He gets cancer. Hmm, bummer. Panic. Panic in his eyes. He's hanging on. He doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to leave his stuff. And he doesn't want to go before his wife. And he doesn't want to have to leave everything he's worked so hard for to anyone else. He just wanted to, honestly, I'm surprised he didn't burn all with him in it. But every time we would approach him with it, no matter what kind of a mood, he would get so mad. Sometimes after driving down to see us for almost three hours, he'd just get his car and go back home. And that is how miserable and stubborn he was and very adamant about not hearing the word. You know, the word will make you run to it or run screaming away from it. And he was screaming. Well, finally he ends up in hospice and we're a few hours away. And a few weeks before he passed on, my husband, again, um, was up there. Uh, well, before that, I tell you, on the phone one time, I said, hey, I'm coming up to see you. Anything you want me to bring you? And he said, well, a new life would be nice. And I said, we've been trying to give you one for years. And he hung up on me. He's laying in hospice and he hangs up on me. Anyway, so my husband goes up there a few weeks before he passed away. And uh, starts talking to him again about being saved. And he closed his eyes, put his head back on the hospital bed, and said, get out. He told his son to get out of the room as he laid there dying in hospice because he didn't want any part of it. Didn't want to hear a thing about it still at that point. Well, my husband and I had decided it's so painful knowing what's going to happen. So we decided, you know what, you're not going to see him. If he's going to pass and go to hell, that's what's going to happen. We've done everything that we could. We planted the seeds. It's God's time to water. And the hospice nurse calls and says, your dad wants to see his son right now. It's been weeks past right before he dies. He needs to see his son right now. So my husband goes to the hospital room and his father grabs him. Not a touchy-feely man. When he came to my house, I would hug him and he was just stiff as a board, which would make me want to hug him even more. But he grabbed him. He said, you're right. I saw it. I saw heaven. You're right. Panic was gone. It was gone. And he was peaceful. And today, he's in heaven. From that last bit of his life, confessing that he needs a Savior and that there really is one. And I remember thanking God, going, thank you for saving that miserable old man who did nothing but curse you his whole life and didn't deserve to be saved. And when I said that, God said, saved you too, Holly. It's for everybody. Thank you. I just want you to pass this on. It's absolutely true. <laughs> Have a super day and God bless.